shock. Shock occurs when a person's internal organs don't receive enough oxygen-rich blood. There are several causes of shock which are listed in your book. The symptoms of shock are restlessness or irritability, pale, cool, moist skin, shallow, rapid breathing, a rapid, weak pulse, excessive thirst, nausea or vomiting, and an altered conscious state. To treat shock, first warm up the victim by using a survival blanket. If the person is unconscious or semi-conscious, put them into the recovery position first. Try to wrap them securely in the blanket. If they're conscious, don't give them any food, liquid or cigarettes and monitor their ABCs. Some conditions which may cause shock are loss of circulating blood volume, hypovolemic shock, that is severe bleeding, major or multiple fractures or major trauma, severe burns or scalds, severe diarrhoea and vomiting, severe sweating and dehydration. Cardiac causes, cardiogenic shock, that is a heart attack. Abnormal dilation of blood vessels, distributive shock, that is severe infection, allergic reactions, severe brain or spinal injuries. Electrical shock and burns. When you come across somebody who you suspect has suffered an electrical shock, the first thing to consider are the dangers. Look around to see if there are any electrical leads in the area. Remember that electrical leads are more dangerous around water. Before attending the victim, you must make sure that all electrical leads around the victim are disconnected. It is essential that the rescuer avoids any risk of electronic shock. Specific management steps when dealing with a person who has suffered an electric shock include two. Ensure safety for the rescuer. Shout for help. Call an ambulance. Disconnect the electricity supply where possible. Commence resuscitation if necessary. Apply first aid. The management depends on the voltage and circumstances. The signs and symptoms of electrical shock and burns are unconsciousness, dazed and confused behaviour, breathing difficulties, obvious burns to the skin surface, weak, irregular or absent pulse, burns where the current entered and exited the body, which are often on the hand or foot. To treat electrical shock, monitor the ABCs. Start rescue breathing and CPR if necessary. Hyperventilation. Signs and symptoms of hyperventilation are rapid, shallow breathing, fear and anxiety, dizziness, numbness in fingers and toes, feelings of suffocation and feeling loss of body control. Here we show you how to treat hyperventilation. Reassure the victim and encourage the person to slow down their breathing. If the symptoms of hyperventilation are unresolved, call for an ambulance. Dial triple zero. Matt, you'll be all right. I want you to hold every second breath and release on my command. Hold, release, hold, release, hold, release. Okay, you'll be right. Concussion. Concussion can often result from a significant blow to the head which can cause temporary impairment to brain function. The symptoms of concussion are loss of memory, headache, irritability, blurred vision, loss of coordination, loss of consciousness, numbness and tingling. For concussions, seek medical assistance immediately. There may be a spinal injury, particularly if the victim feels numbness or tingling. If the face is red, raise the head. If their face is pale, raise the tail, that is, the lower half of their body. If the victim is unconscious, you should turn the victim onto their side and obtain a clear airway. Check for breathing, check for and control bleeding and cover wounds. 
arrange for transport to hospital by ambulance. While waiting for transport to hospital, you should note any changes in the level of consciousness, bleeding from the eyes, mouth or ears, and seizures. While regaining consciousness after a head injury, a victim may vomit, have blurred vision, be irrational or uncooperative, have memory lapses, be dizzy, unable to recall events surrounding the accident. A victim should not be left alone. If consciousness returns, the victim should be given reassurance, kept lying down at rest and transport arranged to hospital by ambulance for assessment. Spontaneous pneumothorax. A pneumothorax occurs when air enters the pleural cavity, which is the space between the lungs and the chest wall. Normally this space is kept at a balanced pressure, ensuring that air is pulled into the lungs when the chest wall expands and the diaphragm descends. A spontaneous pneumothorax can occur when there is an internal rupture of lung tissue. This can follow a violent bout of coughing, severe asthma attack, serious lung infection, or a rupture of a cyst on the surface of the lung. Signs of pneumothorax are coughing, chest pain, often under the shoulder blade and or a sharp pain in the shoulder tip on each attempt to breathe. Breathing difficulties, especially the inability to take a full or deep breath. Restricted or absent movement of the chest wall on the affected side. A rapid or weak pulse. Signs of shock. As the air continues to enter the pleural cavity, a tension pneumothorax can develop. The victim may collapse and even die from the increased pressure on the heart and unaffected lung. Position the conscious victim so they can breathe comfortably. This is usually sitting up with support. Reassure and calm the victim. Send someone to call for an ambulance and monitor the vital signs while waiting for help to arrive. If breathing stops, Rescue breathing may keep the victim alive until the increased pressure can be relieved by medical care. <music> Penetrating chest and back wounds. Penetrating wounds to the chest or back can be life-threatening. A forceful puncture, such as a stab or gunshot wound, may penetrate the rib cage, allowing air to enter the chest through the wound. This reduces the ability of the lungs to function normally. A penetrating object can also injure vital organs within the chest, causing internal and external bleeding. If the chest wall is punctured, outside air will be drawn into the pleural cavity, causing the lung to collapse. You will hear a sucking sound coming from the wound. Other signs include pain in the chest or back, difficulty breathing, cyanosis seen around the mouth or in the nail beds, Frothy, blood-tinged liquid being coughed up. Bloody liquid bubbling from the wound during breathing. Sucking sound when breathing. Signs of shock. Your main concern in this situation is the problem of breathing. Assist the victim into the most comfortable position. Often sitting up with support to the head and shoulders. Cover the wound with a sterile dressing. For a sucking chest wound, cover the wound with a dressing that does not allow air to pass through it. If it is available, you can use aluminium foil, folded several times to make an effective dressing. Tape the dressing in place on three sides only. The lower edge should remain loose to keep the air from entering the wound during inhalation, but allowing it to escape during exhalation. If no foil or similar dressing is available, use a folded cloth or as a last resort, your hand. Continue to monitor the victim's condition closely and treat the victim for shock. If the victim becomes unconscious, place the victim on the affected side and care for the airway, breathing and circulation. Call an ambulance immediately. Asthma. In asthma, Symptoms are made worse by triggers. Every person's asthma is different, and not all people will have the same triggers. Triggers can include colds and flu, cigarette smoke, exercise, inhaled allergens, for example, pollens, 
moulds, animal dander and dust mites. Environmental factors, for example, dust, pollution, wood smoke, bushfires, changes in temperature and weather, certain medications, for example, aspirin, chemicals and strong smells, for example, perfume, cleaning products, emotional factors, for example, laughter, stress, some food and food preservatives, flavorings and colorings, which is uncommon. Asthma can be recognized by the following signs and symptoms. A dry, irritating, persistent cough, particularly at night and early morning, with exercise or activity, chest tightness, shortness of breath, wheezing, high-pitched whistling sound during breathing. Signs of a severe asthma attack include some or all of the following. Gasping for breath, severe chest tightness, inability to speak more than one or two words per breath, feeling distressed and anxious, little or no improvement after using reliever medication, sucking in of the throat and rib muscles, blue discoloration around the lips, can be hard to see if skin colour also changes, pale and sweaty skin, symptoms getting worse quickly or using reliever more than every two hours, young children appear restless, unable to settle or become drowsy. A child may also suck in muscles around the ribs and may have problems eating or drinking due to shortness of breath. A child also may have severe coughing and vomiting. An asthma attack can take anything from a few minutes to a few days to develop. If the victim has a personal written asthma action plan, then that plan should be followed. If there is no plan in place, then the following plan should be followed. If a victim has any signs of severe asthma attack, call an ambulance, dial 000 straight away and follow the asthma first aid plan while waiting for the ambulance to arrive. Step one, sit the person comfortably upright. Be calm and reassuring. Do not leave the person alone. Step two, without delay, give four separate puffs of a reliever. The medication is best given one puff at a time via a spacer device. If a spacer is not available, simply use the puffer. Ask the person to take four breaths from the spacer after each puff of medication. Use the victim's own inhaler if possible. If not, use the first aid kit inhaler if available or borrow one from someone else. The first aid rescuer should provide assistance with administration of a reliever if required. Step three, wait four minutes. If there is little or no improvement, give another four puffs. Step four, if there is still no improvement, call an ambulance immediately, dial triple zero, giving four puffs every four minutes until the ambulance arrives. No harm is likely to result from giving a reliever puffer to someone without asthma. If oxygen is available, it should be administered at a flow rate of at least eight litres per minute through a face mask by a person trained in its use. If breathing stops, give resuscitation following the Dr. A, B, C, D. Provide assistance with self-medication as per subject's own medical regime and in line with state territory legislation regulations and policies and any available medical pharmaceutical instructions. Administer medication in line with state, territory regulations, legislation and policies.